Well, praise God. It's exciting to be here with you all. Really are. Filipinos are tremendous people. They really are. You know, it's, uh, you find them everywhere in the world. It used to be you found an Englishman, an Australian, and a German, wherever you went in the world. But now, everywhere you go, you find a Filipino. Everywhere. Wow. And they're beautiful. We love the Filipinos because, I don't know, they're just a, a very... I don't know, they're happy people, they're joyful people, a pleasant people and a kind people. And it really is great to be with you tonight, it really is. And we love your pastors, we love Bishop Rich and Ning, and they have done a wonderful, wonderful job. They really have, and I congratulate them just on all of the people they've raised up here and the churches they've planted. It's amazing. I use them as a, as a reference so many times when we talk about church planting and the, the different ways that you do it. And it's tremendous. And of course, you know, Pastor Al here gives oversight in Asia and has done a tremendous job in all of the different nations in Asia. So I think it's wonderful to see what has happened in Asia. You know, I heard on the, uh, on the news the other night that it says the, the, the second biggest English-speaking country in the world, do you know which country it is? The Philippines. The second biggest English-speaking country in the world. Bigger than England. And Australia. you got more English-speaking people here than there is in England and Scotland and Ireland and Wales all put together. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> and of course, you know, that does give an advantage in some areas. And, I, and Hazel, I want you to come. This is my wife here. Come on, honey. This, this is... She's my partner. She's my best friend. And she's an amazing woman. She's like superwoman. <laughs> All women are like super women. Amen. Amen. I want her to introduce our two Canadian ladies. We here. have very uh, a team with us tonight. First of all, I'd like to introduce Pastor Sherry. Pastor Sherry McLean. Stand up, Sherry. She's from Eastern Canada. And her husband and herself, they actually pastor a church in the eastern side of Canada. District directors. And we're very, very happy to have them here. And yeah. They, her husband is a director of the Victory Churches in that province in Canada. So we're happy to have her. And, uh, of course, she's going to be uh, one of our speakers at the Women's Conference. Yeah. How many ladies are coming to the Women's Conference? Yeah. Oh, I want to see this. Okay. Yeah. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. And you men, you will miss out if you don't come. Amen. So we want the men. Also, we have Patty Haynes. Patty is here also from Canada. And she uh, will be one of our speakers also. And Patty and I and, and Sherry actually have done women's conferences over in the east part of Canada as well. So things are really looking up. Amen. And I love the Filipinos. I love you guys. You know why? And, and, and some of the things I know about you is always want, let's take a picture. Let's take picture. <laughs> so I have lots of pictures with lots of you. Amen. But I think we're in for some more. Amen. So praise the yeah. Lord. So tonight you're going to hear uh, my favorite preacher. Uh, Pastor George is a, a wonderful uh, man. He's got a lot of knowledge. And I hope that you'll draw it out tonight. Amen. If you don't suck on the anointing, the anointing won't come. Right? So you've got to sit on the edge of your seat and suck it out. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's stand up and give the Lord a big hand clap tonight. <laughs> Amen, yeah, because Jesus he is hand. worthy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that you're in the house tonight. Lord, you said where two or more are gathered in your name, that you are there in the midst of them. And so, Lord Jesus, you're the honored guest in this house tonight. And we thank you, Lord, when you're in the house that miracles are in the house. When you're in the house, that healing's in the house. When you're in the house, deliverance is in the house. When you're in the house, freedom is in the house. And we say, Lord Jesus, have your own way in this place tonight. I thank you for each and every one that's here. And I thank you, Lord, for each and every one leaving different to how they came in Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you for it, Lord. We just submit this time to you now. We thank you, Lord Father, for the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. 
in this place. Lord, you know the needs of each and every one. And we thank you, Lord, you're the God that supplies all of our needs. We thank you, Lord, that you're the God that heals. You're the God that delivers. You're the God that sets free. You're the God, Father, that empowers. You're the God that gives great ideas. Father, and I thank you, Lord, for breakthroughs in every individual's life in the mighty and wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Father, let the potential in this room be released for the glory of Almighty God, I pray, in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Well, you can be seated. I'm going to talk to you tonight on the power of potential. The power of potential. And, um, you know, the potential. Look at the potential in a seed. You ever noticed a seed is just a seed? If you took a seed, any kind of seed, and you just left it on this table, you could come back 20 years from now and still be sitting on this table a seed. Right? You could leave 10 seeds. And uh, 20 years, 50 years from now, that would still be the same amount of seeds on the, on the table. Now, the interesting thing is when you take one seed and you plant it into fertile soil. How many know what happens? Take one seed, you plant it into fertile soil, and it says, and, and it will reproduce. It's the principle of, reproduction is the principle of life. And seeds don't reproduce until they're planted in the ground. Jesus talked about his own life in John chapter 12. He says, except a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. It says, but if it falls into the ground and dies, it shall bring forth much fruit. And the seed, our lives are a seed, aren't they? And the, the Word of God is a seed. It's that the sower sows the Word, and if the seed lands on good ground, it can bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold. That's 100 times the power that's incredible when you think of it. If it lands on bad ground, stony ground, hard ground, it doesn't produce at all. If it lands on that ground that's got thistles and thorns in it, the thistles and thorns will choke it. So it only brings forth a little bit of fruit. And I tell you, but if it's good ground, good ground, it's so wonderful. You know, you can count the seeds in an apple, can't you? You ever cut an apple open and seen the seeds? How many seeds do you think are in, a, in an apple? How many? Any? I don't know how many there are, but there's not too many. <laughs> not too many. It's not even worth counting, really, is it? <laughs> I think it's, some have a little bit more than five, you know. But anyway, you can count the seeds in an apple, but you cannot count the apples in a seed. Huh? You cannot count the apples in a seed. You plant one seed, and it can become a tree. And then that tree produces apples, and they produce more seeds. Before you know it, you've got an orchard. Huh? I mean, the whole of the Philippines could be covered in apples. Couldn't it? Right? If it just kept being planted and fertilized and watered. Now, that's the way it is with the gospel. The gospel is a seed. We've got the seed, the Word of God. The Word is a seed. When it's planted in your heart, it produces and the seed produces after its own kind, doesn't it? So the potential of our lives, I tell you what, your life, every one of us in here, our life is like a seed. Each and every one of us have potential within us. And I tell you, I don't know about you, but I'm not, I don't want to be happy settling for less than what I was created to be and do. I tell you, it's amazing if each and every one of us in this room rose to our full potential. Wow. Imagine what would happen in and from the Philippines. It would be incredible. Imagine if the church reached this potential. Huh? I mean, what is the church? The potential of the church. You know, the potential of the church is powerful. I mean, it's the light of the world. It's the, it is the hope of the world. I mean, it's powerful. I mean, if you want to know what a church at full strength is like, look at the book of Acts. You know, where Peter's shadow healed the sick. I mean, you know, where whole cities were saved. I mean, it's amazing. Just handkerchiefs off of the Apostle Paul's body caused the sick to be healed and devils to be cast out. The full potential of the church. Man, I tell you what, this is why you need revival. Revival is designed to bring the power and the strength back to the church. Huh? Isn't it? And so I want to talk to you about this whole, the power of potential. You know, uh, in Ephesians chapter 3, 
In fact, let me give you these three phrases first. If when you see God's potential, you become a dreamer. Remember that. Number two, your own potential, you become an achiever. And then number three, when you see potential in others, you become a leader. And it's like a process. A lot of people are not leaders because they've never seen uh, God's potential. They've never seen their potential. Therefore, they can't see potential in anybody else. We've got to get to the place where you go right through those three things. Now, a scripture that's really a great one is in uh, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. And of course, you remember the scripture says, All things are possible with God. Right? Remember that? And it also, says, also goes on to say, All things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible with God. All things are possible to them that believe. So it's vital that we're believing God's potential and then be believers so that we can experience His potential in our own lives. Ephesians 3 and verse 20, it says, Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now look at this. It says, now he is able. That doesn't mean he's going to do it. Right? Now, he, who, that is, who, to him who is able. He's able to heal. He's able to deliver. He's able to bring revival. But that, does that mean he's going to do it? No, it's according. It says according to the power that works in us. That word according means it's measured by this. The release of his power in our lives is measured according to the power that works in us. That's different to the power just being in you. You can get filled with the Holy Spirit and you have power. But the power working in you is determined by the seed that was planted, the word that was planted in your heart, and then, and then, that, and then uh, the, 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 the seed dying and bringing fruit. That happens when we hear the word and do it. Remember where it says in James, be a hearer of the word and not just a doer only. It says, if you hear it and don't do it, you are deceiving your own self. I tell you, it's one thing for somebody else to deceive you, but when you deceive yourself, people think just by knowing it that it's going to work. No, it gives you the power to work. Meditation on the word and the revelation on the word gives you the power to be able to work and the power to be able to do certain things you couldn't do before. And so, exceedingly, see that? According to, it says, it says, now he is able to do, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above. I tell you, that's really high, isn't it? That's not just doubling something. Exceedingly abundantly above. What? All that you can ever think, all you can ever imagine, all you can ever dream. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above and beyond, all you could ever ask in your highest prayers. All you can ever dream in your wildest of dreams. All you could ever believe for in your wildest imagination. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly, above and beyond that. Huh? I always say, dream as big as you can. And then double it. Or triple it. You know, nothing, nothing, nothing starts until somebody gets a, a good idea, a God idea, and a big idea. And I tell you what, and it takes work to make it happen, but I tell you what, you get it, and, you, and it's a God dream. It's wonderful what can happen. Albert Einstein said this. He says, imagination is a preview of life's coming attractions. Your imagination is what you see in here, is a preview of your life's coming attractions. Wow. And I added to that, therefore, be careful what you imagine. Because <laughs> imaginations can be bad, can't they? It talks about evil imaginations, where people's minds were full of wicked ideas and imaginations continually. That's why God destroyed the earth in Genesis chapter 6, because of wicked, evil imaginations that continually dwelt in the hearts and the lives of people. But good imaginations... God imaginations. You know, the dreams that I like, anybody can get. I'm a dreamer and, 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 and because I go through those three things. You know, but dr the dreams I get, anybody can get them. The dreams that I like are dreams that come 
from deep imaginative thinking based upon the Word of God and prayer. Huh? You've read the Word of God, now you're in prayer, and now you're beginning to imagine and dream on, on, on what that would look like, how that can be applied in, the, in my life, how that can be applied in the small group that I'm a part of, how that can be applied in our church. Deep imaginative thinking. He comes up with, and, and I like it when he comes up with, I, I want dreams that will solve problems. Huh? Get a dream, and this dream's going to solve a problem. Huh? Dreams that will help people. Dreams that will expand God's kingdom. I tell you, when you get that, then my goodness, it's wonderful what can happen. It really is. You're dreaming, it's getting a preview of life's coming attractions. Wow. Therefore, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have the right imaginations and the right dreams. Really. And so, number one, when you see God's potential, you become a dreamer. Wow. I mean, you think of it. God is the creator. of the, He created everything from nothing. Nothing we can see. It says everything visible was created out of things that are unseen, invisible. So this visible world was created by the invisible world. And God spoke it into existence, didn't he? Let there be light, and there was light. Let there be this, and there was that. Let there be something else. He spoke it into existence. The scripture says that life and death are what? In the power of the tongue. It says in Proverbs 15, it says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue. A tree of life. A tree of life. It says in Revelation 22 that there's healing just of that tree of life. You know, without the fruit, just even the leaves, there's healing in that. You see, so it's important that we not only get it in the heart, but begin to speak it, meditate on it, and begin to do it. I mean, if God created this whole thing from nothing, and we're created in His image, right? I mean, you know, it says in John chapter 1 and verse 12, it says, uh, to as many as receive Him, to them gave he power. This is what it says in the old King James. To them gave he power to become what? The sons of God. He gave them the power to become the sons of God. So when you were born into this world, you were born a son or a daughter of God. A, a, of man. Right? A son of man. But when you got born again, you become a son or a daughter of God. Then that gives you greater potential. Do you think you've got more potential as a son of man or a son of God? You're going to have more, isn't it? Jesus was birthed into this world as a son of man. You know, but then it says how he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Huh? So he walked around as a man, same as you or I do, in the flesh. There was limitations on him, on the face of the earth. But he was anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost. Same as we are. And tell you what, it's wonderful when you begin to see the potential of God to change things. I mean, I've seen God step into our lives and into our ministry time and time and time again. And you have as well, right here in the Philippines. Dr. Al has. We've seen him come in and, and uh, all of a sudden you wonder how things are going to happen. And then all of a sudden God gives you an idea. God gives you favor. God gives you just what you need when you need it. I tell you, I will say this. We want to be Holy Spirit, directed and empowered. But that does not mean life's going to be easy. It doesn't mean everything's just going to be rosy just because you're Holy Spirit, directed and empowered. You've got God's will. You've got God's plan. You know what it is. You're empowered to do it. And what he does, this is what it does mean. It means every assignment God gives you is going to give you the authority you need. It's going to give you the resources you need. It's going to give you the favor you need. But not without opposition. Because there's a devil, yeah? There's a devil there, and, and you've got to overcome, and it's part of the process. God wants to build you before he gives you. He says, I commend you to the word of God, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance amongst all those that are sanctified. That's Acts 20, 32. He wants to build you and give you. That means we've got to grow. 
It means we've got to be stretched. Otherwise, if he gives you, before he builds you, what he gives you will destroy you. Huh? You're just not ready to handle it. So there's some things you don't get until you've grown a certain part. At time. The battle very often prepares you for the blessing. So when you get a battle, you're in a battle, just say, this is good for me. I'm going to win. God's given me all the tools I need to be able to overcome and conquer and win. Don't get depressed and discouraged just because there's opposition. No, you need to say, wow, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to break through and grow and become stronger than ever before. So God will be able to give me. I mean, the scripture says in Psalm 84, 11, it says, No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So, 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 I mean, sometimes you wonder, why is that good thing being withheld? Well, a good thing can be withheld from you through one of three reasons, according to that verse of scripture. Number one, it can be because you're not walking uprightly. Number two is because you just haven't grown enough yet. And if you get what you were praying for and really wanted, it could destroy you. And God has to do some work in you first, stretch you, enlarge you, make you bigger. And then the third one is uh, because God has the better thing. If you get that good thing, you can miss out on the better thing that he's got for you. You know, some people, oh, I lost that job. And then they'll look back later and say, well, that's the best thing I've had. If I hadn't lost that job, I wouldn't have got this one. Huh? Yeah, I mean, hey. I think, it was, I think it was Billy Graham's wife that said she would have married the wrong person four times <laughs> if God hadn't intervened. You know, and you can. I mean, hey, you can end up marrying the wrong person. Huh? Well, th then she has to become the right one or he has to become the right one. So it's not just marrying the right person, it's becoming the right person, isn't it? And so God's potential you see first. It's caused you to become a dreamer. Wow. You look at the sky, sky and the star. God created this out of nothing. Wow, he made me, created me. And he talks about how intricate the body is in Psalm 136 or 7 or something like that. It talks about the body and how fearful, fearfully and wonderfully made we are. All of these intricate little parts and we need every one of them. It's not like you can just chop one of those parts off and you don't need it. No, you need, you need them all. They were all designed with a purpose in mind. It really was. So number one, you've you, you got to look at the Scripture and see God's, see the wonder of God. You know, even, even when you look at the, the first and the second commandment, it says, and I know it's one of the things was all about love, but you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then what? Love your neighbor as what? As yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. I tell you, if you don't love God, it's, it's hard to love yourself. And even harder to love your neighbor. But when you love God, through his love, he gives you the ability to be able to see yourself the way you were created and love yourself. Not, not with a healthy kind of a love. And not with that. It gives you the ability to be able to see uh, others and be able to love them as well. Even the unlovable. You get to the place where you can with a bit of effort. <laughs> so number one, number two is this, you know, is, is when you see your own potential, you become a, an achiever. I'm created in the image of God for a purpose. Everyone in here has a purpose. I, I, I really believe this, you really don't believe, you really don't begin to live until you find God's purpose. And once you find his purpose, you're not ready to die <laughs> until you see it become a reality. God's purpose. I'm here for a purpose. Everyone that God creates is here for a purpose. You are not an accident of evolution. If you were, then there's no reason for you being here at all. But if you are created by a creator, he doesn't create junk. He creates people for a purpose. And there's a purpose for your life. And as you begin to seek him, he'll drop it in your heart. And you begin to understand why you're here. And then that purpose begins to grow and develop. I believe your destiny is a progressive thing. It really is. You, every assignment you fulfill. I mean, look at the Apostle Paul's assignment when he first got saved. First one, go to Damascus. And then it'll be told you <laughs> what you're supposed to do. <laughs> if he hadn't gone to Damascus... Uh, he might never, might never have got there. 
It might, it might have stopped there. I tell you that every, your obedience, beyond your obedience, God has blessing and increase for you and for others. Today's blessings are a result of yesterday's obedience. Tomorrow's blessings are a result of today's obedience. That's why it's important to obey, even if you can't understand it. I don't understand it, but I trust you. And I'm going to do what you tell me to do. You know, so just this whole aspect, when you see your own potential, you become an achiever. You know, um, it says in 1 John 4, 4, it says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Isn't that powerful? God dwells in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We need to become God inside minded. This creator of this universe lives in me. Yeah, he lives in me. Now, we've got to become God inside minded instead of inferiority inside minded or poverty inside minded or, or, or uh, you know, all of the other inside minded you can get that are wrong. No, we need to realize the great one lives on the inside of me. I remember one young man, yeah, he was only 16 when he ended up preaching in his churches and doors opening for him. And then one time he, he said, you know, God, he says, most of these people are old enough to be my grandparents. And then he says, the Lord spoke to his heart and said, son, I am older and wiser and more intelligent than anybody you'll ever speak to. And I live on the inside of you. Yeah. See, if you realize that, you'd never feel inferior again in your life. God is older, wiser, more intelligent than anybody you'll ever speak to. And he lives on the inside of you. Greater, I tell you, I mean, there were times where he told his disciples, don't even, don't even meditate about what you're going to speak. I'll give you the words. I tell you, God can do that. Drop the words. He can give you the ideas. He's full of great income producing ideas. And wants to drop if that's, if that's what God's called you to do, business, he can drop one of those income producing ideas into your heart. He's the God that, that gave uh, Fleming and told him how to turn a, a piece of molding bread into the miracle of penicillin. Huh? He's the God that showed Edison how to develop a light bulb. Oh, I'll tell you what, he can show you whatever it is. If you're, if you're called to be one of those inventors, then he can drop it into your spirit just like that. You know, I love that one the, about jo, uh, George Washington Carver. You ever read his story? He's the man that, 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 that took a peanut and developed 300 different products out of a peanut. He changed the whole economy of the Southern America. He was from Mississippi, I believe it was. And he was a horticulturist. He was an Afro-American. At that time when there was very little opportunity for Afro-Americans. But you know what? He got that peanut and he, he would go into God's, he called it God's little workshop. He, uh, and he would, he said he never took a, a science book or anything into that workshop with him. He just took the Bible and he began to pray, talk to God. And God would drop all of these different things. What he can do with the peanut. Man, you can make peanut butter. You can make oil. You can make, you can make it creams. You can make something else. And he developed all 300 different products. Changed the economy. I mean, there's only so many peanuts you can eat, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of peanuts, you have an eh? A couple of bags full and you, you, you know, that's it. But when you look at everything else, you know, and, and he, he attributes God for that. You know, found his own potential. Found his own potential. You see, God had placed something great within the inside of him. I know when I, when I first got saved, I always wondered what could possibly be exciting about being a Christian. I didn't get saved until I was 30 years of age. I don't ever meet, remember meeting a Christian until I was 30. At least not one that impressed me any. You, saw, <laughs> you know, and, and then my wife got saved and then she's, she was praying for me. And I'm trying to get her out of Christianity, but 18 months later, I accepted Christ. But I, when I did, I'm still wondering, man, what am I going to do? I mean, I know what Christians don't do. You don't do this, you don't do that, you don't do this, you don't do that. And... Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, I, I, just, I, just, I just heard a, a message on politics the other day, and it was saying how this, in some ways, the restrictions that are on us make for a great country. If you get Christians in government, there are certain restrictions through the Word of God. We don't lie, we don't steal, we don't cheat, right? 
We don't deceive. We don't do certain things. And just because of the restrictions placed on us, we can be great leaders that can bring great freedom and liberty into our nation because we have this restriction on the inside of us and we have the power to do it. And we can do it. And God wants us to do it. I believe in getting good Christians in, in, in politics, great leaders in, in political positions. Said so when the righteous are in authority, what? The people rejoice. When the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. And so we need to really battle to get the right people in the key positions of authority in our nation. It's important that we vote, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you have no say. You know, uh, so it's important that we, that, we, uh, that we seek for the best that God has. But I know the, one of the first passages of Scripture when I, when I got saved, I'm thinking, wow, you know, it looks like if I get saved, I'm going to have to give them all my money away. <laughs> I'm going to lose all my friends. I'm going to live a miserable life. Because my wife is saved by this time, see? So I'm going through it. Give all my friends, lose all my friends, give all my money away. Live a miserable life. But you know, I was looking for truth more than anything else. By this time, I traveled all around the world. But like Solomon, no satisfaction in anything. You know, all is vanity, all is emptiness. Life under the sun, without God, without eternity. Doesn't matter what you accomplish, it's nothing. And it's vanity and it's emptiness. It's only the heavenly vision that ever makes, it gives you, it gives you earthly ambition. It gives meaning and value and, uh, and, and to it. When it's linked with the heavenly vision. How many know what the heavenly vision is? Do you remember where it is? Acts 26, 19. Paul said, I have not been disobedient to what? To the heavenly vision. And he told us what the heavenly vision was before that. Is to turn Gentiles from darkness to light. From the power of Satan unto God. That they might receive forgiveness of sins. And an inheritance amongst all of us that are sanctified. That's what the heavenly vision is. I have not been disobedient. Every earthly ambition needs to be linked with the heavenly vision. You know, I mean, hey. All of our passions need to be linked to Christ's number one passion, the passion for souls. Huh? He came to seek and save that which was lost. And, and, and so finding our potential. And I tell you what, as you begin to step out and do what God's called you to do, I tell you, it, it can be, we, we call it the happily terrified feeling. Remember that? It's when God asks you to do something, and you're terrified at what he's asked you to do. I mean, imagine the, imagine the uh, Ananias in Acts chapter was it Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 10, where he's uh, he told to go down to a house on a street called Straight. You'll find a man. Knock on the door, you'll find a man that kills people like you. His name's Saul. And I want you to go in there and pray for him. Huh? And lay your hands on him. You imagine how he felt. You know, I mean, I'm sure I'm not qualified for this. Send somebody else. <laughs> But he was obedient. Imagine if he wasn't obedient. He was obedient. I'm sure God would have got somebody else. How, how many know God's plan is not just depend upon one man? If one man won't do it, to get another one. If another, and if he won't do it, to get another one. Somebody, his plan will be fulfilled. It's just whether you do it or not. Like with Esther, how do you know you're not called for a time such as this? And then, and then Mordecai said to you, if you don't do this. If you don't go and make intercession to the Jews, God will raise up somebody else to do it, and you and your family is going to miss out. Yeah, you don't do what God called you to do, you get somebody else, and then you miss out on the blessing. Wow. I tell you, some of those things he asked you to do, though, I mean, they can be, they can be, uh, they can be kind of terrifying. You know, so this is where you've got to say, God, I'm going to, I'm going to be beaten. I don't understand it. It doesn't seem right. But I'm going to do it. I love what uh, Charles Spurgeon said. He said, God is too wise to be confused. He's too good to be unkind. And if you cannot always trace his hand, you can always trust his heart. Huh? You can't always trace his hand. It doesn't look right. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem fair. You know, but... God, I don't understand it, but I trust you. I trust you. I tell you, that's, that's different to faith. Faith, you, you say, trust is, 
it's a, it's, it's, it becomes pretty passive in a way. Throw me to the lions. <laughs> but then with Daniel, threw to the lions and God shut the mouths of the lions up and, uh, and he went to sleep. Woke up the next day and then Nebuchadnezzar ended up, you know, turning to God, turning his heart to God through that, through that miracle. God's still a God of miracles. He really is. And so, you know, our potential. I tell you what, God revealed to me in Mark 16, verse 17, right through 20. This is, one, this is my first, first Bible study I pretty much went to after I just received Christ. Wondering, what's going, what can be exciting about being a Christian? And then it says, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. In my name, they'll speak in new tongues. In my name, they'll lay hands on, on the sick and they shall recover. And they went everywhere, God working with them, confirming what? His word with signs and wonders following. I thought, man, wow. Nobody's ever told me this before. Here I am sitting there and I think, man, such imagination is there. Wow, this is incredible. You know, and, uh, and I thought, I looked around, I saw a bunch of miserable people in the church. I thought, man, they've known this for years. They should all be happy. You know, and then, then I went out and started doing it in construction, you know. And, 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 and souls are getting saved, lives are getting changed, miracles are happening. And that was the birthing of the whole victory movement. Just out of that one passage of scripture. It was the birthing of the whole victory movement. Thousands of people getting saved. Healings, deliverance. And, and, and really, you know, the city we were in, it pretty much transformed that. And then from there, right across the nation and around the world. It's just you believe God and you're going to do it. Really, it's, it's amazing. What a powerful scripture. And then all of a sudden, I realized, I realized that man, this, God didn't call me for a miserable life. I mean, man, this is more exciting than anything I ever did. And I had an exciting life before I was saved. But nothing like this. Now you can really help people and see people's lives changed. You know, I, I, I did give away all my money, but he has a bigger shovel than I have. You know, and he shoveled it in faster than I could shovel it out. So we still have more than enough that we're, than what we'll ever spend before we die. You know, and it's because, and we've given it away, but given, 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 but give and it what? Shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You know, in Mark chapter 10 and verse 29 and 30, that's a scripture that God gave Hazel and I when we released at that time one of the largest churches in Canada to my associate. And, and, the Lord, and we went to start a, a, another church in another little town. He gave us that Mark 10, 29 and 30. It says, No man gives up anything, lands, homes, houses, families, or anything for my sake in the Gospels without being rewarded a hundredfold. In this life, eternal life, in this life, a hundredfold, houses, lands, families, and eternal life with persecution. <laughs> but it's been true. You know, I tell you, God doesn't take stuff away from you without giving you something better. I tell you, it's good to remember because there are times if you want to go up, you have to give up. It's just the way it is. Certain things, man, you want to go to the next level. Sometimes it means releasing some of the stuff that's going to keep you on that old level. Some of the things you're comfortable with and you feel secure in. Yeah, sometimes you just have to release that and trust God for things you need in the next level. Yeah, have you ever experienced that? Well, if you're going on and growing on with God, you will. Number three is this. Number three is, is, is when you see potential in others, you become a leader. Say, this is big. I mean, seeing potential in yourself is one thing. And it's great to see that. I know, I, I received, when I, as soon as I got saved, I received a job, supernaturally, as an electrical instructor teaching maths, electricity, magnetism, all the rest of it. I didn't know anything about it, hardly. And I got this job, and um, they were going to pay me the, as the highest paid instructor in that area. Never taught in my life. Afraid of speaking in front of people. And uh, I came home. They gave me all these books. And I, and I went home with all of these books. And I went into our kitchen. And I'm sitting there. And I'm opening them. I'm looking at them. And my face is getting whiter. I'm whiter and whiter. And my nose is beginning to quiver. My, my lips are quivering. And Hazel looked at me. She said, George, what's wrong? I said, I've never even seen this stuff. 
and I have to teach it in two weeks to men whose future depends on it. I said, you know, I can't do this. You know what she said to me? She says, George, she says, if God gave you this position, he'll give you the ability to be able to do it. That's what she said. Yeah, she, he'll give you the ability to be able to do it. I said, yeah, that's right. If God gave me it, he'll give me the ability. And, uh, and, and I told her, I'd be like, yes, God, you're going to give me the ability. You're going to make me the, the best teacher in this college. You're going to do this, 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 and this. I told her, I'm totally afraid. And I tell you what, God supernaturally would teach me maths, supernaturally teach me all the different equations, supernaturally stuff I could never understand in my life. And sometimes somebody asked me a question in the class, and I didn't know it. I turned my back. <laughs> and you get words of knowledge and words of wisdom. I got it. That's it. I got it. And you begin to get excited about, about, about maths and uh, you know, electrical formulas and theory and things like that. Even understanding the code, which is like a, a lawyer's handbook. You know, now you have to decipher it for everybody. But you know what? I mean, God, that was part of my training to become a minister. See, God puts you through things to become trained. I mean, look at Moses. He had 40 years in Pharaoh's palace, 40 years in the wilderness, and 40 years leading Israel through the wilderness. You know, that was all part of his experience, wasn't it? In the palace, he learned a lot of things that was going to be needed when he had to come back and stand before Pharaoh and, 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 and present the case of the Jewish people. And then when he was able to take them through the wilderness, he'd already been there as a shepherd, and he'd been leading sheep, so he knew exactly what was necessary to get the people through there. And so your past experiences, God doesn't waste any of them. You know, sometimes we think, well, what am I doing in this job? Well, I tell you what, so often it may not seem like it's got anything to do with your future, and yet he doesn't waste your experiences. He'll put you in something. Do the best you can with what you've got now, wherever you are. Don't wait for the right job to pop up for you. Just be the right person in that job you've got right now. And then so it's amazing what can happen. Yeah. Huh? Isn't it? So, the, um, when you see potential in others, Proverbs 20 verse 5 says this. The purposes of God in a man's heart are like deep water. But a man of understanding draws it out. Now, I'll tell you what. You see, that's, that's a vision, it's like a visionary person. I put here about Barnabas. Barnabas saw potential in Paul when no one else did. Barnabas' name means son of encouragement. They, they, that was his nickname, Barnabas, son of encouragement. That means he saw the good in people. He looked for the good. He believed the best, willing to take a risk on people. We say that's what our victory spirit is. Our victory spirit is where we, we believe the best. We look for the good. We believe the best and we're willing to take a risk on people. And we do. You know, that's why we've ended up raising up so many leaders, many people, and giving release to people. But you have to be able to, this verse here, I'm believing you're going to get a hold of this. A man of understanding, purposes of God are deep, like deep water in everybody's life here. It's deep, but a man of understanding can draw it out for parents. Parents need this so you can draw the potential out of your kids. You've got five kids who are all different. You can't just put them all into the same thing. They're all different. One might be a good piano player, but it doesn't mean they all are. One might be good with mechanics, but it doesn't mean they all are. You've got to get the plan for that individual's life. I tell you, mothers and fathers, you can see the potential and you draw it out. How do you draw it out? Well, you see, you see where they're going and you create an opportunity for them, right? You can see they've got some, 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 some they love for this area, and you put them in that area. And, and watch them bloom. And it's the, same, it's the same with anything. What you have to do is begin to see the potential and then be able to direct people into it. Our pastors in Calgary used to say, God loves you and Pastor George has a good plan for your life. <laughs> you can ask any of our leaders, that's what they say. Because, you know, I mean, it seems like I had a plan for everybody's life. Because I could see the potential. I could see the potential, and I knew what they needed to do, but to get there, they had to, they had to have some challenges. They needed to learn some things. It's a little bit like if you're a coach. If you're a coach, you know, I used to do a little bit of boxing when I was young. Believe it or not, I was gorgeous George. That's what they call me. 
<laughs> Not the best boxer, but uh, all my family were. But you know what? When you're boxing, they start you off with somebody they know you can beat. You know, and you go in, you beat this person, and then they have a second one that you beat, and then they put, put you in against somebody that they're not sure if you can beat him or not. And if you can't beat him, then you get back and you get more training. They don't put you in against the world champion, do they? When you've had three fights. No, they don't. You know why? Because if you did, you get totally slaughtered. And you might not be able to get in the ring again <laughs> for the rest of your life. But you'd certainly be discouraged. So there's a process where you have to train people. And that's what we try to do in churches. We see the potential and people, you know, sometimes you find out what you're called to do by finding out what you're not called to do. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. Try it. Can somebody help in this area? Yeah, yeah, me, yeah. And you jump in there and then you find out that's not your calling. But you're doing it out of obedience and because there's a need. Now, you know, you may not be called, but you know what you're going to do? You're going to develop character. I hated it, but I had a three-month commitment. I did it, and I finished my three months. Hallelujah. <laughs> do you want to do it again? No. <laughs> what do you have next? You know? I mean, you're sure. But it's good to try some things. That's the beauty about being part of a church. There's always somebody that loves to do what you hate. Yeah, and all you got to do is find them and, and put them into that position. So seeing potential in others. Now you become a dreamer, seeing potential in others. You look, at, look at Jesus in John chapter 1 and verse 42. It says, now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. This is who you are. This is who you're going to be. Not overnight. It's going to take time, tests, and good choices. But I tell you, with time, tests, and good choices, you can become everything God wants you to be. It doesn't happen overnight. I tell you, God has a plan for your life, and it's a process. We don't like to be in a process, but you're in a process. You know, like processed food, you know, goes through. <laughs> We're in a process. <laughs> and the process is good for you. It's like school. You've got to go to school to get a degree. It's a process. And so when you see God's potential, you become a dreamer. When you see your own potential, you become an achiever. When you see potential in others, you become a leader. Leaders have to be able to see potential in others. I tell you, this is where God needs to touch our eyes so you can see beyond the obvious. Anybody can see the obvious, but it's seeing the diamond when it's just a lump of coal. Is seeing beyond that. You know, Dale Carnegie, he had 43 millionaires working for him. This is years ago when being a millionaire was something, you know. And, he, and, uh, and then somebody came to him and they said, well, how come you have 43 millionaires working for you? He says, well, they weren't millionaires when they started working for me. They became millionaires through working for me. And then he said, well, what is it you look for? He says, well, it's like gold mining. You know, to, to, to mine gold and go into gold, you have to dig through tons and tons and tons of dirt. But we're not looking for the dirt. We're looking for the gold. And that's the way it is in a lot of things, looking for leaders. Sometimes you have to dig through tons of dirt. But that's not what we're looking for. We all have things that we, you know, that we're, we're not proud of. We all have a lot of things that we've done that are not the best. We've all failed at times. So that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at where you're at now and what God has for you in the future. You know, and every leader is vital that we do that. Likewise with parents for the children, bosses for their employees. We all need to be able to see the next generation coming up, the people behind us. Otherwise, we'll end up having nobody to give anything to. If you gave it to them, it would destroy them. How many people do we have here that are leaders in this church? You're a leader in this church. Just stand where you are right now. You're a leader in this church. In some way, children, youth, music, hospitality. Stand up. Any, any area, any area, 
You know, you might be a deacon, you might be an elder, you might be a Sunday school teacher, but you're leading something, you're leading a group of people, you're leading kids, you're leading youth, you're leading an hospitality committee, you're leading somebody, somewhere, how many? You, okay, and now what I want, I want you all just to come right here, just right here, this group, just come, all come up here, if you're one of those, you're, you're leading the, the multimedia, whatever you're leading, just come right here. I want to pray for you. I want to pray... I want to pray that God will touch your eyes and touch your ears. I want to pray that, uh, I want to pray for, no, just look this way. Just look this way. It's me. <laughs> wow. That's good. So you're all workers in this church. That's wonderful. My goodness. Wow. Oh, you're blessed, Petra Rich and Ning. You are blessed. Look at that. Some people will be happy with a church this size. Huh? you got workers. Thank you all so much for being willing to do it and be willing to take some leadership. But you know, there's, uh, there's people under you and people you're helping. You need to see the potential in them. You need to see beyond the obvious. And I'm just believing that there's going to be an impartation tonight that will cause you to be able to see the next leaders, the one that can take your position, the one that can be like you, the one that can do your job, the one that can do more than you've ever done. Somebody there that would be going to be greater than you and do more than you've ever done. I'm believing for that. That's the potential. And so, Father, I just thank you for each one of these right now. And, Father, I pray in the wonderful name of Jesus, uh, Father, you touch the eyes of each and every one. Just touch your eyes like this. Put your own hands on your own eyes. And I want you to say, Father, anoint me with fresh oil that my eyes might see and my ears might hear. They might see what I've never seen before. And my ears will hear what they've never heard before. And I might understand the potential in the hearts and the lives of the people I lead. And then, Lord Jesus, help me to draw that potential out. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you for it, Lord. Father, I just pray now in Jesus' name, just for that impartation upon each and every one right here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let your anointing, Father, touch them right now. Uh, Father, I pray to you, Lord, that you'd cause there to be just a freshness and a newness. Father, as they look to people and they look into their lives, I pray to you, Lord, you'd give them, Father, the keys, Father, to unlock their capacity and unlock their potential. That they'll go to a new level. And Father, I pray in Jesus' wonderful name for these leaders. I pray to you, Lord, that you'd cause them not only to see the potential in others, but cause people to see the potential in them, people over them to see potential in them, in Jesus' wonderful name, that they might go to another level, in Jesus' wonderful name. If their parents, I pray to you, Lord, you touch their eyes, that see potential in their children, that their children might fulfill that potential. And Father, I just say thank you for it in the wonderful and powerful and mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name wonderful and powerful and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, was it, were you Rocky? Is this Rocky? You were the one that drove us last night? Yeah, I thought it was. I tell you what, there's real potential in you. There really is. You know, and I, I, there's more in you than anybody's ever seen. And I, I just sense that there's a, there's a call in your life. You want his wife? Wow. Yeah, tell you what, just together as well. You know, you can become a visionary husband you see the good in your wife and you draw it out she become a visionary wife where she can see the good in you and draw it out and, and, and then you both go up together this is powerful becoming visionary spouses it really is you know because you can help one another but you can help your kids the more you can help your children to become everything that they, they are called to be but I see I see the call of God in your life in a bit in a big way Rocky that's a good name I like that <laughs> Rocky Five. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord, for Rocky and his wife. I thank you, Lord, Father, for the gift that's on them. And I pray to you, Lord, that you'd bless their ministry in Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name and cause them to, 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 to not only see your potential but see their own potential and then see potential in others. Thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' wonderful and powerful name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now remember the process of this. You want to 
see God's potential. Then you want to see your own potential. And then you want to see potential in others. And then you want to learn how to release it too. That means you've got to be obedient. You've got to step out. That means you're going to have to, you're going to conquer your fears. Right? Because there's going to be some areas that God wants you to do that are very fearful. It'd be nice if He just asked us to do the things we want to do. But very often He challenges you. And you get the happily terrified feeling. I'm happy He wants to use me. I'm terrified at what He wants me to do. <laughs> and so, Father, I just say thank you for each one. I thank you for each one. And Lord, I thank you for their obedience as they serve you. And I'm believing, Lord, you're going to take them all to the next level. Take them all to the next level, whatever that next level is. And Father, some are just in the position temporarily, and they're being trained in that position for another position. I believe there's a number of you like that. This is a training for you. And some of it's a training even for secular work that you're going to be doing. And God wants to bless you in the secular field in big time. But this is a, this is a process, and whether it's to develop character, whether it's developed the, a certain skill, a certain ability, but you're in a process right now. And so don't quit. Don't quit till you know your time is over. Don't quit till you're finished. If you, if you finish before your time, you stop growing. You don't learn and you don't grow. And so, Father, I just say thank you for that in Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray a Father's blessing over these right now. I pray that Father's blessing, a spiritual Father. Lord, you made me the spiritual Father of this movement. Father, and I pray that spiritual blessing right now upon each and every one. And I pray, dear Lord, that with that blessing, there'd be an empowerment that comes upon each one. An empowerment that comes upon each one that will cause them to prosper and succeed in what you called them to do. In Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Let them prosper, that Father's blessing. Let them prosper and succeed in what you called them to do. In Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. In Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you for it, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, by the laying on of my hands just right now, even just that touch of when I touch you just, just you receive that potential Father in Jesus wonderful name let their potential be stirred up Lord in Jesus wonderful name and let the blessing of that Father come upon them right now in Jesus wonderful and powerful and mighty name thank you for it Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I thank you Lord you take them to the next level let their eyes be open let their ears be open let them see what they've never seen before let them hear what they've never heard before and then Father give them a heart that will cause them to rise up and do what they've never done before in Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Father, these, your servants, I bless them right now in Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Some back there I never really prayed for. Let me just get through there. I'd like to just lay hands on everyone here if I can. I, tell you, I just believe there's an impartation here tonight, an impartation that God's imparting to you, something you need. It's almost like there's an impartation of something you need. Sometimes this piece is missing, and then they're very comes together you know together and father i just say thank you for that i pray dear lord you give each one the, the favor they need i pray dear lord you give each one the resources they need. i pray dear lord you give them the authority they need to do what you called them to do and lord i thank you for in jesus wonderful and powerful name i thank you lord for pastor rich and i thank you for before and i pray dear lord, anoint pray your in fact, Pastor Rich and Nick, you come here. Let me just pray for you too, right in front of these, right in front of everybody. And Hazel, I want you to come here as well. Just as we pray for Pastor Rich and Nick and Pastor Terry, too. Come on right up here. And Hazel, why don't you come up here with me? Yeah, come right up here. Come right up here. And then I want you all, all you leaders, just to just to press in here a little bit. And I'd like everybody just to stand in the place as well. And I want you to stretch forth your hands. Come on, Pastor Rich and Ning and Pastor Al. You know, these we're real proud of, of the whole team here. We really are. You know, Pastor Al has done a lot of work here in Asia, done a lot of work for the Philippines, and uh, and really you've seen the potential in people. You saw the potential in Rich, right? I mean, I remember that when he came back. He said, "I found a man." You know, he saw potential in Pastor Rich. And then with that potential, the doors of opportunity open. And Ning, the two of you together. And then from there, you saw potential 
in all of these people, right? I mean, you've seen potential in all of them. They wouldn't be, they wouldn't be, you know, in a position of authority if you hadn't seen potential in them. You really appreciate that. I tell you what, you, 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 when you when you're in the process, appreciate those people that see potential in you and give you a chance. A lot of people will give you a chance when you've made it. You know, when you're at the top, oh yeah, I want him. Well, yeah, there's, there's another thousand companies want him as well. I tell you, but if you raise them up from scratch, they never forget you. Or you should never forget the one that raised you up and helped you. You know, so just pray, honey, just come here and let's pray. Father, I just say thank you for, for Bishop Rich and for Ning. I thank you, Lord, for what they have done. And I thank you, Lord, for what they are doing. And I thank you, Lord, for what they're going to do. And I thank you, Lord, no good thing. You are not going to withhold any good thing for them. And Father, there's lots of good things ahead. And Father, I just thank you, Father, for everything they're going to need. I thank you, Lord, for all of that authority, all of the resources, all the favor they need. Father, for them to do in and from the Philippines what you called them to do. In Jesus' wonderful name, touch their eyes, Lord, I pray. Father, they'd be able to see. Father, there'd be the, those people that understand, Father, the purposes of God in the lives and the hearts of each one that you put them in contact with. And then, Father, give them that ability to draw it out in Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you for the leaders they are. And Father, I pray that blessing of the spiritual Father on them as well in Jesus' wonderful name. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, let them be supernaturally blessed now, I pray. And Father, with that blessing, let there be an empowerment, an empowerment that comes upon them that will give them all the authority they need, all of the favor they need, all the resources they need. And Father, we thank you for that in the wonderful and the powerful and mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I just sense you guys have battled hard and you got battle weary at different times. But I tell you what, I, I just sense God just supernaturally energizing you and giving you the supernatural strength. You know, already you've done uh, what very few people would do. You've picked up the mantle of many Many people that wouldn't do it, but you did it. You and Ning have stepped in there and you've taken that and you've gone through the, the you've gone through the tough times, you've gone through the hard times, but you've broken through and you've experienced the blessing. And you've gone beyond the barriers, you've gone beyond the walls, you've gone beyond the stumbling blocks, you've gone beyond the hurts, you've gone beyond the offenses, and, and you've got to that place where there's a, a supernatural blessing. And Father, we say thank you for that in Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, let it be an impartation from my life, from Pastor Hazel's life, upon Ning, upon Pastor Ridge's life, from mine, in Jesus' wonderful name. Let the apostolic anointing be stirred up and released in Jesus' wonderful name. Let the prophetic anointing be stirred up and released in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And for Pastor Al, too. Father, I just say thank you for him and his wife. And Father, the work that he's done in and from Thailand. And Father, I pray, dear Lord, Father, that uh, that apostolic anointing on him, Father, would, would be stirred up. And I pray, dear Lord, for good health for him. I pray, dear Lord, for, for prosperity. I pray for peace. And I pray, dear Lord, that you, Father, would cause him not only to see the potential, but draw it out in bigger and better and greater greater ways than he ever has before. In Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just sense the Lord taking tiredness away. It's a little bit, you know, like Isaiah 40, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings of eagles. They'll run and they'll not be weary. They'll walk and they'll not faint. I just sense just a resurgence, something new, just re-energizing you, revitalizing you to do everything that God still has you to do. Glory to God. Amen. Appreciate you, Al. You and Terry have done a great job. You really have. Honey, is there anything you sense in your heart as we prayed for him? Rich and Ning, I really sense tonight that the Lord has breakthrough in mind. You know, God is the God of breakthrough. And there's areas of breakthrough that are needed, not just in your lives, but also in your ministry, but also these people here. And I, I sense that something is happening to bring that breakthrough. Whether it's breakthrough in their business, breakthrough in their marriages, breakthrough in their relationships, breakthrough in whatever it might be. I see that for the congregation. But for you guys, I see breakthrough in areas that are blocked right now. 
areas that seem to be blocked right now, but you're crying out to God and you're asking God, God, this needs to be removed. This needs to be removed so that the breakthrough we need needs to come forth. Amen. And you've been crying out and God's heard your cry. And what I see in the spirit is like a giant waterfall that's just dropping, just dropping. Out. It seems like just dropping out of heaven. And I believe that they are the blessings that God has and they're stored up for you. But you've done what you knew, what you knew to do with what you have. And now there has to be breakthrough. And that breakthrough is going to be a heavenly deluge that's going to fall in this ministry. So get ready for breakthrough. He is the God of the breakthrough yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Father, I just pray a blessing right now over each one that's here. And Father, you know the needs of every individual in this place. You know the physical needs. You know the mental needs. You know the relational needs. Lord, we are the God that supplies all of the needs. And Father, we just uplift every need to you right now. Every need represented in this place. Every financial need. Every relational need. Every family need. Father, every, every, every specific need. Lord, you know exactly what they are. And Lord, you have a supply that's a bigger and, and above and beyond anything that any individual in this place needs and I'm believing Lord for it to be released supernaturally the ideas that are necessary the opportunities that are necessary I thank you for giving the ideas I thank you for giving the opportunities and I thank you for giving the courage to take those opportunities Father when they come in Jesus wonderful and powerful and mighty name in Jesus wonderful name and everyone said Amen now, just, just, just say this with me just what were the three points I gave you tonight? The three points. Number one. Huh? Okay, let's say the first. Number one together. When I see God's potential, I become a dreamer. And then say this, Lord, help me to see your potential and become a dreamer. And number two. When we see potential in ourselves, we become an achiever. Let's say it together. Lord, help me to see my own potential so I can become a dreamer, become an achiever, and become everything you want me to be. And then number three. When, when you see potential in others, the person next to you, the person behind you, the person in front of you, then you become a leader. There's a shortage of leaders in the body of Christ today. Let's say this with me. Father, help me to become a leader by helping me to see potential in others. Thank you for touching my eyes. Cause me to see beyond the obvious that I might become a visionary leader in my area of responsibility, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a clap off and give him thanks. God bless you, Pastor Rich. <laughs>